things are not being easy for me. Uh, since he, since he's not here, I know it's no excuse. I know I'm a grown up man, pero este uh, my, my mom is my mom and my family is the one that, that if I if I still wanna be clean and I wanna be a better, they still look at me and treat me like I'm a like an, I'm a, a drug addict, you know. And and that breaks me down really bad all the time. When people but, have addictions, you will always have that addiction, right? Yes. But it's just a matter of are you going to bend to temptation? Because every day is a day for you not to use. Every day is a day for you to wake up and say, I won't use today. Mm-hmm. Jose Manares, Manjaris, Jose Manjaris. Who's the attorney? Your Honor, it's not an attorney. It's a ah, come forward, please. Hello, thank you for dressing appropriately for court. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. All right, so Mr. Manares. Armand Harris. All right, thank you. I'm working on my pronunciations. So we have an issue. And the issue is with drug use. So they're requesting a residential treatment. Mm-hmm. Yes or no? You understand? Uh, residential treatment. Uh, can you explain me a little bit more about it? That means that you will receive treatment inpatient, and hopefully that will help you with any drug issues you may be having because it appears that you won't stop using marijuana. Uh, I already stopped using marijuana. All right. If you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? Uh, positive, but not for marijuana. Well, for any racist drug. No, because the problem is, and I understand people say marijuana stay in your system, but this marijuana has been in your system since February 2022. It should be gone by now. Yeah, it should. So, why? And you were positive in March for marijuana of this year. And in May of this year, you're positive for marijuana. From March to May, there should not be marijuana in your system. Uh, um, I went to a, a rehab treatment and uh, I just get out of there like, like a month ago. Ah, so you've been in inpatient treatment. Yes, Your Honor. You should have led with that. Oh, I'm sorry for that. No problem. Let me see. That's what you need to lead with. Judge, I've been to inpatient treatment. Your Honor, this has been, um, it's been a while since the supplemental report was submitted. Okay. And so um, the update, but we didn't have a compliance hearing because he was in that residential facility. So, um, from my understanding, he was in the facility for a, a little over a month. All right. So when's the last time you used marijuana or anything illegal? Uh, last week, I relapsed. See, that, I mean, yeah. so it appears that it did not work. And do you need an interpreter? Because I see written on no, here. No, no, I, I, I got it. All right, so we need to figure out what to do with you because you won't stop using marijuana. And I realize people say marijuana is not a big to-do, but in Texas, it's a big to-do because it's illegal. And you just won't stop using marijuana. That's a problem. Uh, What I want to say is that uh, since I get out of rehab, uh, uh, I stopped smoking marijuana. Uh, but no, you just told me you you relapsed recently. Yeah, put on something else. See, yeah, th- I mean that's a problem. Yeah. Did you start using? Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> este, uh, I just wanted to let you know. But I'm trying my hardest to. I know, and we're we're gonna try to work with you, but obviously you have a problem. Because you're looking at 10 years in prison. Yes. And you can't give up marijuana. Well, marijuana, for, for sure, I really leave, my, leave it alone. But here's the thing. You yeah. go from marijuana to well, now it's I, meth. 
and it's something else. Yeah. So why are you using? Uh, was, uh, I know it's not an excuse, but when I was in rehab, uh, my dad passed away. Just me being in rehab and he was outside, wasn't able to see him. Mm -hmm. And then uh, coming outside. Uh, uh, oh, you could have seen him. People come to court all the time and say, judge, this is what's happened in my life. Can I go see my relative? And, and I say, sure. Yeah, yeah. They let me go two days uh, to, to go see him and say bye to him. Este, they thought that I was not going to come back to rehab because of the situation. Este, pero I, I made it back. And, uh, pero the problem is now that I'm outside, uh, things are not being easy for me. Uh, since, he, since he's not here, I know it's no excuse. I know I'm a grown up man. Pero este, uh, my, my mom is, my mom and my family is the one that, that if, I, if I still want to be clean and I want to be a better, they still look at me and treat me like I'm a, like an, I'm a, a drug addict, you know? And, and that breaks me down really bad all the time. My mom telling me that my dad is dead because of me and stuff like that. He only caused me to like, to like, I, sometimes I prefer just to be in jail. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what I can tell you. People who have addictions, and this is from me during research. This is from me being involved in treatment courts. This is from me watching documentaries. When people have addictions, you will always have that addiction, right? Yes. But it's just a matter of, are you going to bend to temptation because every day is a day for you not to use. Every day is a day for you to wake up and say, I won't use today. Mm -hmm. From my understanding, nobody is supposed to say, I'm not going to use for two weeks or 10 years. Nope. It's supposed to be every day. That's supposed to be your mantra yeah. because you can easily fall off the wagon. Mm -hmm. Something bad happens. And instead of pulling out the tools in your toolbox to stop you from using, you break down and use. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, are you able to go back to inpatient at the previous treatment facility? Uh, well, I just, I just get fired from my job last week. Uh, well, this past Monday. Um, right now, I don't have any insurance, medical insurance. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on having my, a job for tomorrow. And then if I'm able to get a, ins a medical insurance, uh, I might be able to go back to to rehab it if that what if if that what you want. All right. So this is what we're going to do. And probation, I say this is what we're going to do, but let me know if this seems like a good idea to you. Put him on intensive outpatient treatment and put him on the UA hotline. And if his levels um, increase, then we're going to have to file a motion to revoke. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Um, do you feel like you need residential treatment more than outpatient treatment? Or? Uh, I, I, to be honest, it's up to you guys. Um, I mean, uh, I really, I really want to stop doing this, and but the thing is, the 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 family, I mean, is still treating me like no matter what, no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try. They still fucking kicking me in the ass all the time. <laughs> no, the, the thing is, what I was looking at, he was saying that he may be employed next week and then he'll be able to do it through his insurance. So when are you expecting this employment to happen? Uh, what well, this week already. All right. So that's why I'm thinking about doing the intensive. Your Honor, if it's okay, um, we go ahead and modify the conditions for the intensive outpatient in the UA hotline. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to get an update from the CSO in regards to his, um, his employment status mm -hmm. at by the end of next week. And then maybe if the employment status is still unemployed, um, possibly status. Okay. All right. So that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's very important that you remain clean and do the 90 sober meetings in 90 days. You need to do sober meetings every day okay. because you will meet people who have the same struggles that you have. 
And I'm going to tell you something that I would always tell my clients. And this is what you have to realize. When you have addictions, I am sure that you were dishonest with your parents. You didn't tell them, hey, I'll be back in, in a little bit. I'm going to go smoke some marijuana. I'm going to do drugs. You told them stories that were not true. And so right now, your level of trust with your mom or your level of trust with your family is probably less than zero. And you can't expect to, I'm on this new path. I'm clean and sober now. So everybody just know I'm clean and sober and forget about everything that's happened in the past. That's not the way life works. So you have to build up their trust and continuing to use is not building up their trust. and It is not building up your trust with the court. You understand? Okay. All right. So let's do that. Yes, Your Honor.